Good evening. Myself, Vaidya Shuganga, I am Tamagond, working as assistant professor in the department of Roganidana in uh, Sri Kavishadheshwar Ayurvedic Medical College, Koppar. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Vaidya Sharad Yam, sir, who has graciously accepted our invitation to join us today. Uh, Vaidya Sharad Yam, sir, completed BMS from STM College of Ayurveda, Udupi and completed post-graduation in Samhita Siddhanta from STM College of Ayurveda, Hasa. Sir is currently working as assistant professor in the department of Samhita Siddhanta in Shivashanta Vireshwar Ayurvedic Medical College, Haviri. Sir is nominated from NCISM as one of the expert member of the syllabus committee for Samhita Adhyayana 1 uh, and selected as coordinator for the syllabus committee of Samhita Adhyayana 2 and currently framing the new syllabus for second year. Sir is a founder of uh, Abda Sayurveda, an organization of through various activities the public with the objective of reach Ayurveda to each. And sir got, got various uh, awards like Agni Vesha Award, Youth Icon Award, and Best Paper Awards in post and paper presentation competitions during his PG studies. And we are honored to have Vaidya Sharad M. Sir with us today to share his insight and experience with all of us. Today we will be discussing on teaching learning methodologies and I am confident that uh, uh, Sir will provide valuable insight and perspectives on this important topic. On behalf of our study circle, that is Madhukosha family, a honeybee network of Ayurveda students, I would like I would like to extend a warm welcome to Vaidya Sharad M. Sir and thank him for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, with that, I invite Vaidya Sharad M. Sir to continue the session and I welcome all the participants. Sir, please continue the session. <clears throat> Thank you, Shiva Ganga, for the opportunity and I humbly uh, give my pranams to all the audience and all the team of Madhu Kosha. Shiva Ganga, I will be sharing my screen. Please confirm whether it is visible or not. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Yes, sir, it's visible. Shall we start? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So today we are having a discussion, not exactly the discussion. So we are dealing with the teaching learning methodologies. So a humble request to involve your Saima. So what is Saima? Anybody? Can anybody say what is this? Shivaganga? No, no, not exactly. <laughs> okay, so a humble request to involve Saima, that is nothing but Sharira, Indriya, Manas, and Atma. So, as we know, the definition of Ayo goes like the combination of Sharira, Indriya, Manas, and Atma. Why I am telling this? So, before starting all my presentations, I do this request because. Without manas, we cannot gain the knowledge. So we all have a purpose today to join in this meeting. That is to gain the clear knowledge about what are the teaching learning methodologies. Because we have seen so many changes in the current curriculum. So on what basis they have made the changes? On what basis the syllabus has been made? Everything has been, uh, everything has to be discussed to every each one of you. So please involve your Sharira, India, Manas and Atma. And we have the concept of Jnana Utpatti Krama in Ayurveda. So that is our Indriyas are going to gain the knowledge by the observation to the Indriyatas topic. Because if you can understand today the concepts, you can easily understand the new curriculum. So today we have eight contents mainly in this presentation the first thing is problems in ayurveda education system and the terminologies and then the bloom's taxonomy steps of learning skills and its types understanding current ayurveda syllabus here i am going to explain you uh, with the uh, with the syllabus itself like how it has been uh, made and how we can understand the syllabus 
and the seventh point discussion on education methods in ayurveda and the last thing is take home points so we'll start with the first point and i have mentioned these main eight points in this way so problems in current ayurveda education system so i always call chatushpad of ayurveda education is ncism students teachers and also the college management so if i am talking about problems in our ayurveda education system then there are some problems related with the teachers there are some problems with the students there are some problems by the college management and there are definitely some problems from the policy makers that is nothing but ncism so as you all know ncism has brought so many new changes in the curriculum by observing the problems in the previous education system we had so these four things should go in hand go hand in hand to implement the syllabus properly and to bring the change in the ayurveda field so each of them has the different roles so i have mentioned some of the problems so before discussing my idea i want someone of you to tell what you have found problems in the ayurveda education system Shivaganga, can you say some problems? Hard, I said. Yes, you can tell some of the problems what you have noticed in the education system in Ayurveda. Uh, the main thing is uh, uh, Sanskrit, na Sanskrit, uh, because uh, even though it is taught in uh, first year, but many many of the students are facing to learn and chant the shlokas. and they are telling the same problem till final year so we we are unable to uh, read the shlokas uh, we are unable to remember shlokas and understand the terminologies ayurveda yes. terminologies yes okay so one problem is not understanding the language properly that is sanskrit language it is not being taught properly or students are not oriented towards the sanskrit language any other opinion or any other problems practical application is rare sir yes very good so practical application is very less most of the times students tell me that sir to us you will be teaching how to cook rice and in the exam you are asking how to cook palav so this is a common thing students have the notion that in ayurveda we are not teaching so many things practically definitely it is one of the problem in ayurveda and any other problems okay so let's present my views so first problem is only theory no practical so most of the times we keep on teaching and this was the problem in the old method so this is rectified in the new syllabus but don't know how far it is implemented in many colleges but most of the times we keep on teaching the theoretical things we keep on teaching the dosha dhatu mala but when it comes to practical to show in the patients sometimes we fail and all the teachers are not able to do these practical things in the patients so this is the one of the problem and second is teachers don't know themselves about many topics this problem is there because many of the teachers are not aware of their subjects and sometimes they may be very good in studies they may be very good in uh, ranks but uh, they may, may not be able to teach it to the students such kind of problems are also has been observed and no proper assessment methods the biggest drawback of old syllabus was that every time we used to conduct exams and viva and we all know that how exams and vivas are being conducted till now so we are not assessing properly students have a notion that anyhow we have to get 50 marks in the theory practical anyhow they are going to pass us these are the words told by students practical hego pass martare college alli ant heli so assessment methods are not proper and no skill development so if you ask a student in the internship so all the skills what has been uh, expected being a internee are not imparted properly so no guidance on teachers training so this is a problem with the teachers in our post graduation 
we will be having research methodology as a compulsory subject but don't know how many researchers are going to come out but so many teachers are going to come out of after pg but there is no teachers training in the post graduation itself so sometimes i feel that this topic should be mandated in the post graduation itself so we'll see the other areas of this and no questions in mind of students and it comes to the problem of students so they don't have any questions so this is a drawback created by the modern education system what we are following from our first standard till our second pc everybody is simply reading or simply trying to gain knowledge without having the proper idea about the subject they themselves don't have the questions so we call it as jignasa they don't have curiosity they don't have questions in their mind so the last point was no curiosity to learn among students simply as we are teaching they are simply listening and even so many times teachers are not creating curiosity towards that subject which will make the subject boring so these are some problems related to students teachers and the system if we go on discussing we can find n number of problems but this session is not meant for the discussion of the problems but why teaching learning methodology is very important to understand that we must be introduced to the problems that's why i have told so we always teach in india what to learn there is a syllabus in each standard so in fifth standard the student should read this in 10th standard the student should read this once he is come to bams also we have syllabus that what he has to learn in this year but very few times students are being taught how to learn and more than that most important is why to learn so without knowing the reason simply most of the times we are they are trying to learn so many things and we teach methods and not principles so if you see internees i have seen this in so many colleges so they will be residing near the doctor and whatever prescription will be given by the doctor they will copy it so they will learn the method which is derived by that doctor to treat a particular case but this is of no use because once he will go to his place and he starts practicing same method may not work in that place so student has to taught with the principles and not the methods and this has to be created awareness among students that you should not learn more about the methods than that you should learn about the principles because there is a saying if you learn methods only you will get stuck at some point and if you can learn principles you can derive your own methods as the cases will be different in different places the approaches will be different the manifestation will be different we have to train the students to learn the principles to treat the diseases so these are all some of the problems and the biggest question we have in our mind so i think all of you are uh, presently working as assistant professors mainly in some of the colleges so we should address this issue what is the difference between learning in under graduation and post graduation so if you ask or if you can observe the only difference what was there in the previous methods was in under graduation you have read it superficially and you don't know uh, properly about it and in post graduation you are reading the same topics with some new insights regarding the research and you are focusing on it the syllabus is same most of the times and you are simply focusing more on the topic so there should be a proper and clear distinction between the understanding in ug and understanding in pg so there is no much difference in the ug and pg if we take the previous method so these are the challenges which were addressed by the ncsm when they are making the syllabus like there should be a clear difference between undergraduation and post graduation when they start finding how to overcome all these problems how to change the scenario regarding ayurveda education then they could find the teaching learning methodologies which are there in modern science or modern educational techniques so there is a great saying which i should say before starting the main core concepts of this presentation that is asamarthatha bhayakarana so we are not producing competent students who can go to society and practice ayurveda i am not saying that everywhere it is same everybody is trying to 
create some competent students so if students are not competent if they are not capable then it will lead to fear that's why many of the students are not ready to practice ayurveda not because it is not not just because it is not uh, making them money in the initial days but they are not even competent to practice ayurveda so it is given by charaka samhita that asamarthata is the one of the best reason which will create the fear so these are all the problems we have to address so my first point in the presentation is over that is problems in ayurveda education system and the second point now the terminologies so before going to understand the teaching and learning methodologies you should understand some of the terminologies and wherever it is required i have given the terms in kannada also so that you can understand in a better way read means to look at words or symbols and understand what they mean so as shivaganga was telling so students in first year are not trained with sanskrit language properly so they don't know how to read sanskrit they don't know the right method of reading and understanding the sanskrit language so reading is just oduvudu ant helta nav helte so next is study the devotion of time and attention to gaining knowledge of an academic subject especially by means of books that is called as study so each word has little difference and each word is very important to understand here and the third word is learn to get knowledge or skill in a new subject or activity that is to uh, say in kannada as kaliyuvudu ant helu so oduvudu bere adhyayana maduvudu bere kaliyuvudu bere so these are the terminologies we should know and there is one more important terminology that is comprehension that is grahisuvudu athava grahike comprehension is the understanding and interpretation of what is read so most of the time students are able to read but if you assess what they have understood it is uh, not same always because we always have the notion of gaining the knowledge by connecting with the past knowledge of that subject we have so i did a exercise in my class so once i taught some concept and after that i told all the students to write it in a paper what are what they have understood when i saw their answers it was not same so i have told something and some of the students have understood it in a different way so that is called as comprehension like what they have understood so to be able to accurately understand written material students need to be able to decode what they read so avaru odiruvadanna decode madadanna kalibek they must learn this and make connections between what they read and what they already know so if they cannot connect properly or if they misinterpret or if they decode it in a wrong way this will give the wrong understanding so think deeply about what they have read so this comprehension involves the deeper knowledge of the subject so these are different terminologies related to the studies so related to the education read study learn and comprehension and we have to make the students comprehend properly so these are some terminologies now we'll come to the main topic that is teaching methodology a teaching methodology is essentially the way in which a teacher chooses to explain or teach material to students so they can learn the material there are many different methodologies that can be used by a teacher and the methods chosen often depend on the teacher so there are so many different methods for teaching so if you ask students they won't like teaching of all the teachers so the interest towards a subject can be created by the teacher so subjects will be same but some students will be having interest towards the anatomy if you take the first year some students will be having interest towards ashtanga hrudaya so these differences can be created and will be created by even the teachers so there are different methods which has to be selected by the teacher to teach in the class so different methods we have to implement but if you take the old methods everyone used to come to class they used to teach the theory and they used to go back so this is the method which is not creating interest among the students so we can have so many methods 
I am not going to explain all the methods. Just I will read the names because this is not the main thing which I want to convey. So today I am going to present you the basics of all the understanding of the teaching methodologies. So these are simple some methods which you can see here: teacher centered method, the lecture method, the seminar method. So this we are implementing. So many times we are giving seminars to the students. or we can have a discussion as we are doing seminars for the teaching and learner centered method so in teacher centered method teacher will be most important and he will be doing everything when we come to the learner centered method so here even the learner will be involving in one or the other way to gain the knowledge if you take teacher centered method this is the old method what we used to follow the teacher will be teaching and others will be gaining the knowledge to so the discussion method where we are having a discussion with the students so students actually like this discussion method before starting the topic if you ask them what they know about that they will give some insights so we must try to make them realize what they have known priorly starting with the concept and some demonstration method is there content focused methods the study assignment methods sometimes students will learn when you give the assignment so they will do the activity by themselves then they will learn properly and direct teaching method interactive or participative method a tutorial method online teaching method so these are few which they have mentioned and i am mentioning as some examples so i am not going in detail about this topic and the second word we have is learning methodology so learning methodologies are the systems of practices and procedures that educators mentors teachers and learning guides use to support and enrich the learning journeys of the learners so we have to enrich their learning journey so learning can be interesting by different methods if you keep on teaching in a single way it is not possible we have to involve them in one or the other activities which is uh seen in the new curriculum and actually students are enjoying the new learning methodologies what has been implemented by the ncsm syllabus so here we can have lecture sessions knowledge checks we have to always check the knowledge so this is one of the learning methodology and we can give our experiences on so many cases so i am i have adopted this method in my class so whatever content i will be teaching i will relate it with some cases what i have seen when i say some cases or some instances of the patients they will enjoy it and they will learn it properly so we can have group discussions video presentations these are all the different learning methodologies we can adopt in our teaching so this is also one of the important concept how students will learn so some students will learn by seeing some will learn by hearing and some will learn by reading and writing and some will learn by doing that is kinesthetic so there are four learning methods that is visual learning auditory learning and reading and writing and kinesthetic learning so again there are so many methods which is there in next slide so just we'll have a insight here visual learning you can show some charts and graphs you can use infographics infographics is presenting the information in the graphical manner and attractive manner where students will feel attracted towards it to understand and they will remember it for a longer duration so outlines visual aids you can use and slide deck ppts we can use so this comes under the visual learning and auditory learning we can make them hear some podcasts verbal instructions we can give discussions can be done recordings can be given by which auditory learning is done and one of the auditory learning method is shloka pathana what we have implemented so when students do shloka pathana repeatedly they hear and along with that they will be observing the shlokas so if you ask them they will not forget the shloka for uh, for their lifetime they can remember it because they will be practicing it where visual learning auditory learning both will be involved so reading and writing so learn by reading and writing we can give them books dictionaries note taking assessment case studies these methods will come in reading and writing method and the fourth one is kinesthetic method where students will learn by doing something so 
role playing here role playing means you have to assign them some roles you have to assign them some responsibilities by which they are going to learn and scenario training and hands on training these all points are very important in kinesthetic where some sort of movement or their involvement is seen so these are the different insights if we go deeper into this topic we have so many methods so what's your learning style so here some more methods are given here verbal visual musical or auditory you can see some of the students are learning the the shamanis so the ten drugs they are learning by connecting it with the tune of a song so this is kind of musical or auditory learning physical or kinesthetic learning which i said in the previous slide logical or mathematical learning social learning solitary learning solitary learning here you like to work alone you use self study and prefer your own company when learning so we can see so many such students who will learn by themselves they don't like uh, group discussions they will be involved in themselves for learning so one next is combination there is no need that you will, you have to follow one method so you can take combination of these methods you may use all the methods to learn so in our life we have learned so many things by adopting these methods and if you see the which is best method you can understand by this learning pyramid so average retention rates after 24 hours has been given for the different learning methods if you do lecture students can retain only 5% after 24 hours and if they read by themselves they retain it for 10% and if you show them some video or audio visual things they will retain it for around 20% and if you demonstrate something they will retain it more and if you do discussion where they will be also involving with their opinions that will be in their mind for around 50% and practice by doing if you make them do the activities then they will learn by 75% and if they teach others that will be retained for 90% if you understand this pyramid i feel that this concept is already told by our acharyas if you see charaka samhita vimanasthana 8th chapter we will have the trividha gnanopaya so that is adhyayana adhyapana and tadvidya sambhasha so all these methods are already told by our acharyas where adhyayana is reading they have to read by themselves and adhyapana is to teach others and tadvidya sambhasha where the intellectuals will be having the discussion on the same topic and here in the same point here it is mentioned which is active more active and which is passive anthali so the teaching others and practice by doing these are all the active methods where it will be retained for a longer duration these are the points so now i will be telling some more terminologies still we are in the second point that is terminologies so what is pedagogy so this is a term they use for shikshana shastra so these are the education technologies so here the knowledge of education how to give education how to teach all these things are studied that science is called as pedagogy the method and practice of teaching especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept or the activities of educating or instructing activities that impart knowledge or skill academic subject or theoretical concept so idanna helkoduvantaha knowledge athava skill anna impart maduvantaha methods galenide so adanna study maduvantaha branch of science anna navu pedagogy anta kartivi and there is one more word that is andragogy so that is adult learning or adult education so the method and practice of teaching adult learners is called as andragogy this theory asserts that learning programs must support the notion that adults are self driven and take responsibility for decisions so we are not teaching being teachers we are all teaching the adults only so whoever students we are teaching they are adults they are self driven you you cannot have whole control on them so we have to implement the methods of andragogy and pedagogy so these are the science where all these teaching learning methodologies all the modern education technologies has been 
described and has been evolved so if you take andragogy there are four principles here so what are them are andragogy makes the following assumptions about the design of learning so in andragogy these four steps are involved adults need to know why they need to learn something and this is where we are lacking because most of the two students don't know why they are learning so first we should make them aware that why we are learning something that's why uh, i prefer that students should be assigned duties in hospitals in their first year itself if we make them to work in the hospitals at least one or two to hours a day in the initial time of their joining to the college then they will be knowing why they have to learn this science so without knowing that if we study something it won't be having a much impact so in andragogy first thing is they need to know why they are learning something and adults need to learn experientially so they have to experience and they have to learn adults approach learning as problem solving so the way of approach of adults towards learning should be problem solving so they will be learning because they have some problems to solve them they are going to learn so these principles are major in the andragogy which they have to implement and adults learn best when the topic is of immediate value so most of the times we are teaching so many things which they feel that it is of no value immediately so adults learn best when the topic is of immediate value so we have to learn all these methods being teachers we have to know all these things to create interest among the adults and the main concept of today's presentation is bloom's taxonomy i think some of you are here hello okay so the main topic is bloom's taxonomy this is the person so he has contributed this concept so taxonomy of educational objectives developed in the 1950s by the american educational psychologist that is benjamin bloom which fostered a common vocabulary for thinking about learning goals so this word is very important that is learning goals so after learning something what i am going to achieve if you see the current syllabus they have clearly mentioned the learning objectives so after completion of bams the student will be able to after completion of studying sanskrit language the student will be able to so they have given the learning objectives enanna kalthre en agutte annodanna heltare so blooms has bloom has contributed his the taxonomy for cognitive domain so i will explain this in the coming slides there are three do different domains of knowledge one is cognitive domain and another is uh, affective domain and the third one is psychomotor domain so the whole new curriculum is based on this so i will explain it later but here we have to understand bloom's taxonomy is mainly telling about the learning goals and about the cognitive domain so here you can understand this image so there are different steps in the, these are not the steps rather these are the different levels of learning the cognitive knowledge so first step will be we have to come from the baseline that is to remember and the second is understand third is apply fourth is analyze fifth is evaluate and the sixth is create if we observe these things in the class all the students are not equivalent even in ayurveda we say trividha shishya so there are three different students types of students so the difference in students will be by the different levels of gaining the knowledge so some students can only remember the concept and some can understand it and some students are able to apply those concept practically in different situations and some are good in analyzing them and some are good in evaluating and some are the best students or best teachers also we can say who can create the new things out of the knowledge what they have gained so these are different levels blooms has contributed if you understand in kannada remember is nenapu so recognizing and recalling facts so if you can recognize and recall some of the facts that is remember then is understand understanding what the facts mean 
so whatever you have learned what they mean if you can understand that is the understand level and the third level is applying the facts rules concepts and ideas so we have studied dinacharya rutucharya if you take rutucharya students can remember the name of the rutus but if you ask in detail what they have understood then some of the students are not able to explain but some of the students who have understood it they will also apply it to the present era this is most important because whatever we are reading has been written so many years back and to understand it in present era we have to have some more cognitive domain knowledge so that is apply level and analyze level breaking down information into component parts so whatever we have studied so we are going to analyze it so this level is also important so we have to cross each level then evaluate judging the value of information or ideas and the last one is combining parts to make a new whole so after taking different different understanding from different topics we are creating some new thing so this is for the cognitive domain bloom's taxonomy has been given if you want to describe in knowledge level at this level the teacher is attempting to determine so actually there is difference here you can see it is remember but here they have given different words because bloom's taxonomy was given in 1950 later it was restructured in 2001 and later on so many educationalist has given new insights into it so they say the different words the first one is knowledge level at this level the teacher is attempting to determine whether the students can recognize and recall information if you ask in class the vimshati gunas so if the student can recall the name of the vimshati gunas then that is the knowledge level and the second thing is comprehension level that is at this level the teacher wants to wants the students to be able to arrange or in some way organize information so whatever they have understood you tell them to organize the in information and they can only organize the information properly when they have comprehension about the topic so adanna avaru grahike maadkondidre matra adanna sariyagi present maadlikke sadhya agutte and third one is application level at this level the teacher begins to use abstractions to describe particular ideas or situations so here he will be giving them different situations and different abstracts where students is going to apply the concept what they have studied and the fourth one is analysis level at this level the teacher begins to examine elements and the relationships between elements or the operating organizational principles under guiding an idea so here analyzing so once you give different situations they will apply then they have to analyze okay so this is the next level so fifth level is that is synthesis level at this level the teacher is beginning to help students put conceptual elements or parts together in some new plan of operation or development of abstract relationship and the last one is eva evaluation level at this level the teacher helps students understand the complexity of ideas so that they can recognize how concepts and facts are either logically consistent or illogically developed so this evaluation level is also important where we are evaluating whether whatever we have learned is logical or not but if you see the students their level is very low that they will only remember and some students can understand and apply but very few students we can see who can create new ideas who can create new concepts so these levels of cognitive domain given by bloom's taxonomy is most important because this is the difference what we can create in the undergraduation and post graduation in undergraduation students may reach the apply level but in post graduation he will be analyzing evaluating and he can create new concepts so this difference can be put and this is what we have followed even in the syllabus making that different levels are planned for the undergraduation and post graduation so next is what is learning the whole idea behind this topic is about learning 
So learn is to cully to get knowledge or skill in a new subject or activity. The acquisition of knowledge or skills through study, experience, or being taught. So this concept is most important. This is the fourth point of our presentation. So till now we have studied the problems of Ayurveda education system and some of the terminologies like read, comprehension, learn, study, and pedagogy, andragogy, and uh, Bloom's taxonomy. And in Bloom's taxonomy, we have seen the different levels of cognitive domain knowledge. So now we are focusing on the method of learning. So learning is to acquire, to acquisite the knowledge or skills through study, experience, or being taught. So this is what we are doing. So if you can understand this concept today, then you can learn anything because whatever we are learning in our day-to-day -day life is by these four steps. So this is called four steps of learning. So I will translate it into Kannada also to make you understand this concept. So this is mainly, this can be mainly adopted even for the cognitive domain and majorly for the psychomotor domain. So let me explain this and then I will give the different examples to understand this concept. There are four steps of learning. The first one is unconscious incompetence. So if somebody uh, wants, you can write it down to understand it properly. Unconscious incompetence. Second stage is conscious incompetence. Third stage is conscious competence. And the fourth stage is unconscious competence. So it looks a little confusing, but let me explain each word. So first stage of learning is unconscious incompetence. First, we have to understand the word competence. Competence means in Kannada, samarthya. The ability to perform some activity is called as competence. In the first stage, a person or a student is not competent because he is not conscious about the thing which he has to learn. For example, if there is a person who don't know how to ride the bike, he is in the first stage. He is not at all having any awareness of how to ride the bike. And because of that, he is incompetent to perform that activity. So here you are unaware of the skill and your lack of proficiency because you are not at all aware about that. If you ask me, I don't know how to ride an airplane. So I don't know how to start and how to uh, fly the airplane. So I'm not at all aware about that and I'm not competent also to perform that activity. And suppose if somebody show me some video and explain me how to fly the airplane. If he explains me, then I will be having the consciousness about how to ride the airplane. This is the second stage where I am conscious about that, but still only with the consciousness, I am not able to gain the complete knowledge. That is, only being conscious is not able to perform the activity. Here I will be knowing some theoretical aspect of doing that activity, but I am not able to perform that activity. In the second stage also, I am incompetent to perform that activity. So you are aware of the skill, but not yet proficient. So this is the second stage. So if you want to move from second stage to third stage, that is conscious competence level, then you have to do vigorous practice. So if you take your experience of uh, riding bike, initially you are in the first stage where you are not knowing anything about how to ride a bike, then your parents or your brothers or your friends has explained you what are the parts of the bike, how it will work, how it will start, and how you have to ride the bike. Everything has been guided. Now you have the knowledge, but even that is not enough. Now you started practicing how to ride a bike. Then after practicing for several days, now you have reached the level of conscious competence. That is the third stage where you are able to use the skill, but only with effort. You are able to perform that skill, but being conscious only you can do that. So if your consciousness is not there in doing that, then you cannot perform that activity. If you observe yourself when you have learned the bike initially, you will be more conscious while performing that activity. So along with uh, riding bike, you cannot perform other activities. If suddenly somebody says you watch there, you will 
fall if you cannot control the bike because you are not completely competent here you are having consciousness and having competence but only with effort you can perform the skill this is the third stage and the fourth stage is unconscious competence so we feel that third is the uh, last level but it is not so there is one more level that is unconscious competence because performing the skills become automatic now after riding bike for 5 years you are not much conscious when you are riding the bike you can sing a song you can be hearing a song in your phone and along with that you will be performing and if you see some hum suddenly automatically your hand is controlling the bike automatically your leg is putting the brake so this is how you are learning the skills so this is the steps of learning now if you take the example of making a roti you all observe your mother after practicing preparing roti daily for several years she has reached the unconscious competence level of preparing roti along with making roti she can also cook a curry also she can be talking to you she can be performing some other activity but if you observe the shape of the roti it will be exactly round and if you try without learning this then it will be getting different shapes but if you observe your mother along with doing some other activity also if she performs that that will be exactly of round shape so these are the four steps of learning and you can see one more image where a person is trying to pull that marker to the third and fourth stage so that is a ayurveda student the problem with ayurveda student is he will learn everything to the second level that is he is having consciousness of it but he is not competent to perform that for example if you take sanskrit language they will know how to read they have some awareness how to read but after completion of first year they will not practice it they will not apply it and that's why they are not incompetent that's why they are incompetent to perform that activity so they will be not having the competence so if you take ayurveda students they will learn so many things only to the second level which is the main problem where we are lacking so we have to make the students to practice for example being teachers we cannot make each of the students to practice all the skills if you perform how to check blood pressure in the class if you demonstrate you can make one or the two students to perform it but it is the responsibility of student to practice practice it after that and to gain that skill i have seen so many students even after coming to internship who don't know how to check blood pressure so this is the level of incompetence we have created in the students which has to be overcome so we have to make them practice things for so many duration so that they can reach to the fourth level that is unconscious competence so now there are so many skills but we have classified skills this is the fifth point that is types of skill it is cognitive affective and psychomotor cognitive is the knowledge domain affective is the domain where emotions are involved and psychomotor is the skills where we are performing which are movement oriented so there are so many skills which can be classified into these three headings are these three domains cognitive skills are the core skills your brain uses to think read learn remember reason and pay attention so these are these all comes under cognitive skills the way of a thinking of a person is a cognitive skill the way a person is reading something is his cognitive skill the way somebody is learning is his cognitive skills so working together they take incoming information and move it into the bank of knowledge you use every day at school at work and in life so we have so many so many knowledge in our brain so whenever these things are needed whenever you face with different situations you use some of your knowledge to come out of that that is cognitive skills and the second one is affective skills these skills relate to behaviors and attitudes that students need to learn in order to be effective in their personal and professional lives affective skills are most important 
where your emotions are involved so you can see some students who are very stubborn you can see some students who are very polite and who are interested in doing guru seva who are interested in learning so we feel happy with the students who are having good affective skills and even patients like the doctors who have developed good affective skills if you treat them very nicely they will like you in spite of having good cognitive skills if you don't have affective skills then your knowledge is of no use so creating doctors also uh, require so many affective skills and in our samhitas also you can see so many affective domain skills are given importance and the last uh, type of skill that is psychomotor skills these represent those activities that are primarily movement oriented in teaching emphasis is placed on this movement component although ultimately in practice performance requires an integration of related knowledge and value so to perform a psychomotor skill also you require some of the cognitive skill and affective skill so these three go hand in hand so these three different skills go hand in hand to perform a complex activity into simpler form so to make you understand this concept very clearly we'll give an example i have seen some of the interns who will do two or three abhyanga for the patients and they will feel like they have learned how to perform the abhyanga but the problem is that student has learned only the psychomotor skill which will not require much effort to learn so they feel that just knowing psychomotor skill is enough but if you ask them which oil to be selected for doing abhyanga for vata vyadi which oil we have to select for skin diseases which oil we have to select and based on the different purpose if you ask them the oil to be selected they will be not knowing which comes under cognitive skills so in our class teaching we will be giving so many knowledge that comes under cognitive skills after gaining that knowledge students perspective students thinking will change so we have to impart the cognitive skills and psychomotor skills and affective skills all three and based on these three skills only the new syllabus has been designed so if you open the new syllabus each learning objective has been clearly mentioned whether it is a cognitive domain or it is a affective domain or it is a psychomotor domain so understanding these three is very important to see some of the examples so you can see in the first image somebody is checking the blood pressure so that comes under psychomotor skill but after getting the value of the blood pressure what to conclude whether the person is having hypertension or not that requires cognitive skills and there is a way to convey to the patients if your affective skills are not good and if you convey it very harshly the patient may not feel happy so become a good doctor so all these three skills are most essential so here so many examples are given for psychomotor skills you can see a person is uh, playing with the balls a person is dancing a person is balancing so many things which all comes under psychomotor skills and you can see one two persons are discussing that comes under cognitive skills so we have to maintain the balance between this affective skill and the uh, cognitive skills you can see in the image where all the three skills go hand in hand so only having psychomotor skill is not useful you can see so many students who will learn psychomotor skills and they will feel that they have learned everything but it is not the right way of gaining the knowledge in ayurveda if you list very few psychomotor skills are available and more than psychomotor skill we have more cognitive skills in the our ayurveda for the students so you can also classify skills into hard skills and soft skills in hard skills the skills which can be imparted as it is to somebody else are hard skills they refer to teachable skills or job specific abilities that can be quantified and measured so this can be measured so such skills are hard skills i can make one of my student to learn how i play volleyball how i play cricket and i can make him do the surgery as i am doing the way how i am suturing i can teach him the way how i am doing the abhyanga i can teach him these are all the hard skills soft skills are those where which cannot be imparted as it is to others 
but with lot of efforts you can do that also that is not a issue but soft skills uh, takes more time it cannot be imparted completely the way how i am thinking the way how i am communicating these all comes under soft skills which cannot be transferred to the others so this effort to an individuals social ability and how they relate to and interact with other people so these all comes under soft soft skills so teaching both hard skills and soft skills is very important in ayurveda so if you take we will get so many skills but i have classified main basic skills by which we are learning so many things that first one is skill of observation second one is skill of interpretation and the third one is critical thinking skill of observation is how you are observing everything if you take a first year student to dissection hall he will observe the dead body if you take him to the garden he will observe the plants if you take him to the patients he will observe the patients so whatever you do he will learn first by the observation and second one is skill of interpretation so whatever he will observe for that he will be having some interpretations so this is skill of interpretation and the third one is problem solving that is critical thinking if you face any consequences if you face any difficulties you will try to come out of it by finding the solution and the way your brain thinks in that moment itself is called critical thinking so these are the three basic skills and there is a subject in ayurveda which is kept in first year which teaches these three basic skills that is padartha vignana paper 2 that is nothing but pratyaksha anumana and yukti so these three skills are most important to treat the patient so which is very much important to the students so that's why they have kept this subject but students are not taught padartha vignana 2 in terms of skill so this is my understanding so the sixth point and we have two more point we'll finish soon understanding current ayurveda syllabus so till now whatever i have told are the basics by which the new syllabus is made so the new syllabus is having these points to understand new syllabus these things to be understand so first one is obc so obc is other backward community is it so no obc is outcome based curriculum so obc is not the category what we have given in the caste system obc is outcome based curriculum so previous syllabus was also having some outcomes but it was not clearly represented so here the new syllabus is very clear with the outcomes they are expecting so the whole syllabus is called outcome based curriculum and here we have graduate outcome we have course outcome we have learning outcomes and these things these three things i will show you in the another uh, pdf now after this slide i will show the uh, new syllabus how it has been made and the fourth point is learning uh, outcomes and here the main differentiation in new syllabus is demarcation of lecture hours and non lecture hours in lecture hours the teacher will be teaching in the class and students will be hearing it and they will be observing it and they are gaining the knowledge but in non lecture hours the involvement should be from both of the students and lecturers so it is not just that lecturer will be teaching so in non lecture hours we will be doing so many activities here teacher will be giving some task to the students and they will be involving themselves with that activity they will be giving some opinions they will be interacting so all these things come under non lecture hours so this is the new thing which is implemented in the curriculum where the things are taught in a different way so in first year itself the students are given to do a survey on dinacharya they have given to do survey on what is the opinion of ayurveda in the common public so when we give such activities in the non lecture hours students have involved very nicely in this so this is a curriculum which is completely with lot of activities so domain of knowledge so it is also very clearly given that is whether it is cognitive domain whether it is psychomotor skill or whether it is a affective domain learning objective has been given and 
the most important thing is previously we used to teach so many things but we need we are not assessing whether the skills are important in the students we are not assessing and we cannot assess everything so this syllabus has clearly given that whatever learning objective we are giving in the syllabus has to be assessed and they have given the method of assessment also how we are going to assess so this is the difference between the old syllabus and the new syllabus and terminologies so these terminologies are important to understand the new syllabus so i will show how the new syllabus is made and after the session i will be sharing the user manual where you can go through go through it here you can see graduate attributes so ayurveda samhita has explained many attributes of ayurveda physician charaka samhita has explained the qualities of prana visara vaidya chikitsa pravruta vaidya vaidya vritti and many quotes from almost all chapters of samhita sushruta samhita also also elaborate description of teaching learning process so after analyzing all these things they have developed graduate outcomes they have given nine graduate outcomes that is they have mentioned as ga so graduate attributes so the qualities of the student after being graduate so they have mentioned you can go through this after the session so what are the qualities which they have to gain after the bams has been given and program learning outcomes here you can see the outcomes that is po at the end of the bams program the students will be able to so the students will be able to demonstrate comprehensive knowledge and application of the trisutra concept to explore root causes identify clinical manifestation of disease to treat ailments and maintain healthy status so these are the program outcomes they have designed so this is the thing which is changed by ncism before also these things may be there but it was not given more emphasizes so this is these are the program outcomes and the uh, graduate attributes and there is course learning outcome here course is the subject so if samita adhyayana is the subject then they have given the learning outcomes of the course so in this way you can go through the user manual if any one of you have any difficulty in understanding this they have clearly mentioned or you can contact me to understand what are the learning objectives so now i will be showing you the <coughs> samhita adhyayana 1 which is i will be not explaining completely here you can see the total number of teaching is 400 hours lecture non lecture hour nlh is non lecture hour so more non lecture hours is given than lecture hours if you see here 140 lecture hours are there and 260 non lecture hours are there and the marks distribution everything is given so you can go through the syllabus copy and you can see what are the course outcomes course outcomes is mentioned as co so after learning at the end of ayu uh, ug sa1 that is ayurveda undergraduate samhita adhyayana 1 the student should be able to that is after completion of samhita adhyayana in the first year he must be able to distinguish the different samhitas their importance and methodology and familiarize with the tools of samhita adhyayana here you can see these words distinguish if you see here interpret and apply apply and evaluate practice and prescribe explore and distinguish these all terminologies are designed with a rule so i will be showing you in the next slide in the ppt like how we have designed this course outcomes simply we cannot write whatever is uh, whatever is coming to our mind each word has to be given which can be measured so what things we can measure that things only has put in the column so here content of the course is given and here number of hours required for that here you can see so introduction to samhita you have to do 15 lecture hours and 9 non lecture hours so if you are all teachers of second year subjects even the second year subjects will be giving you this kind of pdf 
to understand that you have to go through the user manual by which you can understand each and every points so this syllabus is very clear that now you can see here in the table 4 so describe various tantra guna so these are the, these are the learning objectives see here it is the course outcome which we are symbolizing here co1 which has been given initially and what are the learning objectives at the end of the session the students should be able to explain the term samhita and this comes under cognitive domain or comprehension so it is a must to know thing so there are so many different uh, headings like must to know desirable to know nice to know so that shows the importance so this is a topic which is must to know and how to what is the level so whether he does it he shows how knows how or no these all have different meanings and only one hour session or one and a half hour session of present uh, today's class is not enough to understand each and everything but this is just kind of introduction to all of you here knows means he must be knowing it so he knows then what is the teaching learning method we are using so here it is a lecture hour so here if you see the third point discuss the various samhitas and commentaries in brief here it is a group discussion we have to teach them in the lecture hour then we have to discuss with them and how to assess this learning objective so i can assess by writing or why i can tell the student to explain the term samhita or i can tell him to uh, I, I can ask him in the viva that to explain the term samhita and the this is a topic in the first term in this way whole syllabus content he is given in this format so this is how we can understand the new syllabus and there are so many minute details also given with the even question paper has been given and if you see the activities evaluation methods everything has been clearly mentioned so this is the outcome of outcome based curriculum so with that mindset only uh, we have come to such an new syllabus so this is uh, these are the things you should know about the current syllabus and i was telling about the words so here there are different levels remember understand apply analyze evaluate and create so these are hierarchical like understand is better than remember apply is better than understand analyze is better than apply to frame each and every learning objectives we are going through these words so if we have to create a difference in UG and PG or first year and second year because Samhita Adhyana is there in first year, second year and third year. So we are creating the difference by these levels. In first year, he may be only able to define something, but in second year, we can take that under, uh, to the understanding level or to the application level or to the analyze level. So while framing the syllabus, we are going through all these terminologies which is the uh, contribution of modern educational technology. So after hearing all these things, you may feel that uh, this is a new thing. But after analyzing Samhitas and reading Samhitas, I could come to the conclusion that whatever has been given in the modern educational technology is not a new thing for our Acharyas. And each and every point has been explained by our Acharyas in the different concepts. So here in this seventh point of my session, I will be giving some of the insights that our Acharyas has given these concepts and ideas priorly so that we should not feel that we have adopted some modern technology for our uh, Ayurveda. In another five years, NCISM is planning to remove all these terminologies and to add only Sanskrit terminologies which are given in our Samhitas. Even this work is also under construction. So, if you see in Ayurveda, they have given the method of Adhyayana, Adhyapana and Tadvidya Sambhasha, which shows different level of gaining the knowledge. So we have uh, studied this in Vimanasthana, so I'm not explaining this further. So if you see Sushruta Samhita, they have given the definition of Prabhashana. Adhita Shastrasya Punar Arthato Vyakhyanam Prabhashanam. So simply reading the Shastra is of no use. So Adhita Shastrasya Punar Arthato Vyakhyana. So in class we are doing Arthato Vyakyana that is called as 
prabhashana so meaningfully narrating the science that is studied is called as prabhashana so this all things were not a new thing for our acharyas and you can also see the concept of anubandha chatushtaya this is given in vedanta darshana and you can see the concept even in the commentary of chakrapani in the first chapter for the shloka athato irgan jivitya madhyayam vakasama in that he has explained this concept so prayojana adhikari vishaya and sambandha prayojana is the purpose of the subject adhikari is the person who is studying vishaya is the subject what we are going to study and sambandha is the connection or the relation between all these things so there is a sambandha between adhikari and vishaya vishaya and prayojana adhikari and prayojana vishaya and prayojana and prayojana adhikari so this vaisa varsa these things are connected so before studying anything we should know the link so what is the purpose of this subject and what is this subject and who is reading it and if you take the adhikari in sushruta there are three types of adhikari they have explained that is trividham grahana shaktim yatha shakti shishyasya shakti anatikramena hina shaktaye padam the one who is not having much grasping power or grahana shakti should read each and every word and the madhyama shakta student should read each pada and uttama shakta read should read the whole shloka means the one who can read the whole shloka and understand the meaning can be considered as uttama uttama adhikari or uttama student or uttama shishya madhyama shakta person can read pada so anybody who can read pada can be considered as madhyama shakta and the one who can read only the words and understand is hina shaktaya so these are the different methods of grasping which can be understood with the comprehension level so just to grahistare another bage so our acharyas had the insight now if you see sushruta this shloka is there where they correlate the understanding of theory and practical should be balanced if a student is knowing only theoretical aspect and not good in practicals it is of no use if somebody is knowing only practicals and not, not knowing theory it is also of no use they have correlated with the bird with one wing so bird with one wing cannot fly so to fly high as a vaidya good ayurveda vaidya you should have both the theoretical and practical knowledge if you see this shloka adhigatam api adhyayanam aprabhashitam arthatha kharasya chandana bhara iva kevalam parishramakaram bhavati यथाकरश्चंदन बारवाहि भारस्य वेता नतु चंदनस्य एवं हि शास्त्राणि बहुन्य अधीत्य च अर्थेषु मूडाः खरवद वहन्ति सो आई थिंक यू नो दिस श्लोक आई विल नॉट एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग सो सिंपली रीडिंग बुक्स इज लाइक अ डोंकी कैरिंग द सैंडलवुड व्हिच इज ऑफ नो यूज सो दीस आर ऑल द इनसाइट्स व्हिच आवर आचार्यस हैज गिवन एंड दे हैव आल्सो गिवन द कांसेप्ट ऑफ uh shastranta if a student has to reach shastranta if you want to finish learning the whole shastra properly then you should have these four qualities the first one is shuchi and the guru para and daksha and tandra nidra vivarjita and this is the problem of our students presently they are tan- they cannot do the varjan of tandra and nidra and they are not guru para shuchi and daksha we can see some of the students are disciplined but to reach the shastranta even this is not just for the students being students of ayurveda being teachers of ayurveda even we should have these four qualities to reach the shastranta and if you see this vaksaushtave artha vignane pragalbe karma naipune tadabhyase cha siddhau cha yateta adhyayana antagah so if you want to like after completion of adhyayana once you reach adhyayana anta you should be able to uh, perform the karmas so karma naipune you should be having the right skills pragalbe artha vignane tad abhyase cha siddhau cha vak saushtave so these are the outcomes what sushruta is expecting after the completion of the study so they were very clear our acharyas were uh, explained everything with the outcome based curriculum itself so even without curriculum our shastras has given such a nice insight but right now it is a question mark among the student after the completion of the bams like what they should do because they have not attained the competency in anything so if you see dashavida pariksha bhava 
So Acharya Charaka says, before doing any activity, we have to examine it properly. So we have to do the Pariksha before doing anything. And they have given the concept of Dasha Vida Pariksha Bhava. The problem in Ayurveda is uh, so many teachers and students restrict this idea only to the Chikitsa because they have explained it for the purpose of Chikitsa. But keep this in mind, this concept can be applied anywhere in your life. So if you want to start your clinic, assess the Dashavida Pariksha Bhava. You assess these 10 factors, then you will get the success. If you want to arrange a seminar, you assess the 10 factors. If you are planning a tool, you can assess this. If you want to marry somebody, assess these 10 factors. So wherever you have confusions, wherever you want to attain success without fail, then you should be assessing these 10 factors because if you assess these 10 factors and involve in the activity, you will be gaining the Ishta Fala and Anubandha Fala. Ishta means Tadatvika Fala, that is immediate result. And Anubandha means the result which happens in the future. So the importance of these tenfold examination is you can achieve the success without uh, any uh, hindrance, so without any problem, you can achieve the success. Now, if you can see this table, they have given Dashavida Pariksha Bhava for the Chikitsa, that is Karana is Vishar, Karana is Beshaja, and all these things. If you can see here, they have given the, uh, this one, the Fala, Karya Fala is Sukha Vapti and Anubandha is Ayu. That is nothing but the outcomes. You can implement this in the college day event. If you want to arrange a college day event, then you should know who is doing who is performing, what is the reason of doing it, and what we are going to do, what is the outcome of doing it, what is the long-term benefit of doing that, where we are doing, when we are doing, and how we are initiating, and how we are implementing. Till Pravritti, everything is like a blueprint. Uh, till Kala, it is like a blueprint, and in Pravritti, we are initiating, that is Karma Samarambha, and the last one, Upaya, where we are implementing. So now I have taken this concept and presented this in the NCISM committee. So everybody liked this idea. So I have done the Dashavida Pariksha Bhavas of syllabus making. So we were into the Karya of developing the course. So I have described this Dashavida Pariksha Bhavas. If you see the Karana is NCISM and Karana. So Karana is one who is uh, doer of this thing. I mean, because of who? we are doing this. Karana is the syllabus committee. We are the member of syllabus committee. And the Karya Yoni, why we are doing this? To make a Vaidya. So the whole purpose of doing this activity is, the reason of doing this activity is to make a Vaidya. And what is the uh, activity we are doing? That is developing the course. And what is the outcome of this? That is course outcomes which we have designed and given in the syllabus. And the next one is Anubandha. What are the graduate outcomes or graduate attributes after completion of BAMS, what he is going to achieve and where this uh, syllabus is going to be done, that is in Ayurveda colleges, it has been implemented and when we have to do this schedule of syllabus making, they have given a schedule, by this time you have to prepare schedule, so that is Kala. Pravruti is initiating the process of syllabus making, we were called to New Delhi and we all met there and we have understood the purpose and we have started the work. And Upaya is, after completion of this, we are submitting the syllabus to the committee, to the NCSM, and they are going to implement this. So this is how you can use this Dashavida Pariksha Bhava everywhere. So I teach this concept in this way. So my students will learn to apply these 10 factors in any of the activity given to them. So in this way, we can teach. And here the whole point of explaining this concept is, to make you realize that even our Acharyas were knowing about these points. So the last point of the session, that is take home points. Being teachers, we have to impart three types of skills in the students. We must assess the level of skills student has gained and guide them. This is the lacking. We are not assessing whether they have developed the skills or not. And one should adopt the new methods of teaching. So. So many new methods are there. If you can Google it and if you go to YouTube, you can get so much of information which can be explained better than me and you can learn them and understand the importance of implementing the new syllabus and learn the techniques. Being the assistant professors of uh, different subjects, 
you have bigger role because we have to bring the change and we have to implement the syllabus given by ncism if we neglect it then students are not going to learn the subject properly and once the society is open to all the students once they become doctors we have students who are not competent so we should not create such students and follow the steps of learning as i said there are four steps unconscious incompetence then conscious incompetence then conscious competence and the fourth stage is unconscious competence so these are the four steps we have to adopt in each and every part of our life and all the modern education techniques were known to our acharyas and they have implemented so if you see all the techniques you will understand it we have to change the methods of teaching by adopting student oriented and outcome based techniques so whatever we are doing there should be outcome which can be seen in the students even after teaching for several years if we cannot see any outcome in the students then our teaching is of no use so it is not always that it is problem of teachers even students are also having so many problems even college management is having so many problems and even ncism is, a, is having so many problems being teachers we have bigger role to implement the syllabus because when all the other problems are there we can bring the change so we have to learn the new methods we have to update ourselves because these things are not taught in our post graduation and assessment method should be adopted properly so whatever assessment methods has been given we have to implement properly so initially we will feel difficult to implement because uh, we have already started implementing the syllabus but it was a new thing for all of us so we have felt so many difficulties but over the period now for my new batch students i have implemented very properly so such changes will come gradually so most of you are uh, of different subjects who are teaching second year subjects or third year subjects or you some of you are new to the first year syllabus also so you all can guide the students in the right way and i will be sharing a pdf of a book called kovida it was compiled by dr arhan sir and the committee of uh, kovida seminar which was held recently in sdm ayurveda college udupi so many authors have contributed their ideologies if you read it properly you can get so much of information on it so i will be sharing it to the uh, shivaganga she will be sharing it in the group and uh, any doubts regarding this you can contact me any time even i am not master in this whatever i have understood i have tried to present in front of you but after understanding all of these things i could conclude that our acharyas knew everything what the modern technologies are there and we can show you so many references for that so with these words i thank the family of madhukosha for providing me this opportunity thank you one and all